Hello, I'm Mr Johnson and I'm going to be working with you on today's lesson. But before we look at our new learning, we're going to look at the problem that was set for you by Mrs Bunce at the end of the last lesson. Hopefully you've had a really good go and now we'll look at how you could have solved this. So the problem was, who has the most chocolate? Is it Josie or Will? So we've got our pictures here. So a third of Josie's chocolate is shown and also a third of Will's chocolate is shown. So we have Josie and Will, and in both cases, the part is a third. So that means that the whole must be three times as much. Now let's look at Josie. So Josie has got one, two, three, four, five pieces of chocolate is one third. So five pieces is her part. So that means all of the parts must be five. So then we need to do our calculation, which is three times five. So Josie had 15 pieces of chocolate. Now let's look at Will. So Will had two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces of chocolate was a third. So that means that if one third is a seven, the other parts are also seven. And our calculation is going to be three times seven. So Will had 21 pieces. So who had the most chocolate? The answer was Will. To help us with our learning for this week, we're just going to have a quick recap because you've seen this problem before. Let's have a look. What's the same and what's different? That's right. In both classes, the number of children in a part is the same because there's four children in the fifth of class A and there's four children in the sixth of class B. But what's different? That's right. The size of the fraction is different. Let's also look at this problem that we've seen before. So what's the same and what's different? Ah, the same is the part because in both classes it's a fifth. So in both classes, the whole is going to be five times bigger. But what's different? The number of students in each part is different. So let's look at this problem. So what's the same and what's different? Well, what's the same is that both classes have got students in them. But what's different? Well. The number of students in each class is not the same. And also the fraction of the whole is not the same. So this problem is different than what we've seen before. But we do have the skills to be able to solve it. But rather than look at the problem as a whole, let's just look at class E. So what do we know about class E? Well, we know there are four students is a fifth of the class. So if one fifth is the part, then the whole is five times as much. So let's say that together. So if one fifth is the part, then the whole is five times as much. That's brilliant. So if we take five parts and put them together, We will now have the whole. And what we know is that in each part, there's going to be how many children? That's right, there's going to be four children in every part. So to find out how many there is in the class, we need to work out what that total is. So five times four students equals 20 students. That's right, that's brilliant. So that's class E has 20 students. So let's look at class F. Now, what do we know? That's right, that there are five children is a third of class F. And if one third is the part, then the whole is three times as much. So let's say that together. If one third is the part, then the whole is three times as much. So if that is our part, we need to put three parts together to form the whole. 
And we know that five children is one third, is one of our parts. So that means that every other part would also be five children. And we need to now find out how many there is in total. So if we do three times five students, we will get our answer of 15 students. So now we know how many children are in class F. So let's look at the whole problem again. So the problem was, which class has more students? So in class E, four students are a fifth of the class, and in class F, five students are a third of the class. So let's look at our working that we did. So for class E, if a fifth is the part, then the whole is five times as much. So five times four students equals 20 students. Let's look at class F. So if a third is the part, the whole is three times as much. So three times five students equals 15 students. So 20 is greater than 15. So that meant that class E had the most students. Now here's a problem for you to have a go at. So the problem is, which class has more students? So in class G, four students are a third of the class. And in class H, six students are half of the class. Now two children have made a prediction about what the answer will be. So Dan thinks class G will have the most students as there'll be more parts to make the whole. And Anna thinks class H will have the most students as there are more people in each part. Now, do you agree with either of them? So I'd like you to have a go, show you're working, and then we'll see whether we agree. So I want you to pause the video now. Let's see if I agree with you. Right, I'm really impressed that you've had a really good go at that. Now let's check your answer against mine. So the problem is, which class has more students? Class G or class H? So let's look at class G first of all. So in class G, four students are a third of the class. So if one third is the part, then the whole is three times as much. So let's take three parts first of all and put them together. So that represents our whole. And each of those parts, there's going to be some children, some students. So how many will there be in each part? That's right, there's going to be four. Now we need to work out how many there are in total. So I have got three times four students equals 12 students. So now let's look at class H. So if one half is the part, then the whole is two times as much. So this time, we need to take two parts and put them together. Now, how many need to go in each part? How many children? That's right, six do. And we need to now work out how many there are all together. So two times six students equals 12 students. Oh, so in this case, Class G and Class H have the same number of students, so neither children who predicted it at the beginning were right. Now I hope your working looks like mine. So this is our final lesson on unit fractions. So let's check our understanding by completing this activity. So I'm gonna want you to fill in all the blanks, but I want you to think about all of the knowledge that you've acquired in the recent lessons. So I'm going to ask you to pause the video and then we will go through the answers after that. So good luck if you'd please pause the video now. Let's look at the first blank. So we know the part is one triangle and the number of equal parts in the whole is three. So that must mean that each part is one third of the whole. So our second blank. So we know that the part is a rectangle and the number of equal parts in, in the whole is five. So I wonder what you put, but I know 
that then if the number of equal parts in the whole is five, then each part must be one fifth. So our next blank. So the part this time is five people and the number of equal parts in the whole is four. But if we look at the picture of the whole, we can see that in each part, there are five people. So that must mean if the number of equal parts in the whole is four, then each part is going to be, that's right, a quarter. So in our next blank, we know that if the part is a line and the part as a fraction of the whole is a fifth. So if the part is a fifth, the whole is five times as much. And then the diagram, the picture of our whole, is going to be five equal lines. And then we come to our final two boxes. And this is similar to the problems that we've been looking at today. So the part is four children, and the part as a fraction of a whole is a seventh. So if a seventh is a part, the whole is seven times as much. And our whole picture, so we're going to have seven parts, and in each part, there is going to be four children. So it would look like that. Now, I hope you got all of those right, because that would show that you've really developed your understanding recently. So that's absolutely brilliant. So really well done on trying that activity. It's quite tricky. Now, keep practicing your skills. And then we'll soon, soon see you in the next lesson. So for now, goodbye.